Hey guys, it's NPC Cora back at it again with another video, and today we're playing Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. Um, I recently started playing Your Turn to Die, Death Game by Majority, and I said it was a lot like this game. In a sense where I mean there's a lot of death and murder. Uh, logic difficulty or action difficulty? I, I have no idea what any of these mean. Um, let's just keep it at kind, I guess. Oh, I thought I was gonna get jump scared there. Alright, that guy is dead. We're already off to a great start. The massive high school towers over all of their buildings in this bustling urban area. It's like the school stands at the center of the entire world. Hope oh, Speak Academy. It brings in top students from every field imaginable, a government-funded school of privilege. They say that if you come here and manage to graduate, you'll be set for life. With hundreds of years of tradition, it sends the cream of the crop into the workforce every year. It was built to raise hope in the nation's future, which makes Hope's Peak Academy a pretty fitting name. There are two things you need to attend this school. You have to already be attending high school, and you have to be the very best at what you do. No ordinary school student can enroll here. The only way in is if you're scouted by the school itself. And standing there at the gate of the ultimate school filled with the ultimate students was me, Makoto Egg. I really don't have much going for me when it comes to grades, special abilities, even personality. I mean, yeah, I have hobbies and stuff I like to do, but it's not like I'm psychic or mutant or whatever. I think that he thinks that everyone goes here is either a psychic or a mutant. <laughs> Even among the average, I'm completely average. So I can't say I'm your everyday hero type. That's just who I am. Anyway, I figured it's always good to introduce yourself right off the bat. Who is he introducing himself to, the player? I'd say I'm a little more gung-ho than other people. I mean, look at me, I'm completely ordinary, but still. Here I am, standing in front of the anything but ordinary Hope Speak Academy. I still can't believe I'm standing here. I wonder if someone like me can survive in a place like this. It's got all- it's got this overwhelming presence, like it's trying to swallow me whole. But it's no wonder I would feel that way. What you have to understand is- Well, let me just tell you about the participation I did- Preparation I did last night to get ready for today. Hope Speak Academy invites those students who are truly elite in their field. It's such a popular topic that there are threads online dedicated to talking about the school's attendees. So to, pre to prepare, I looked up some of those threads. Makoto, you're such a hopelessly average person. I know you say it yourself, but like, goddamn. And all I saw was talk about the ultimate students who are way beyond their, your average high school. Er. For example, one incoming student is the ultimate pop sensation, um, Sayaka thought. I guess she's a high school girl who's also the lead singer for a pop famous all over the country. There's also the ultimate baseball star. He was the cleanup hitter for the national high school champs. Pro teams already have their eyes on him. God damn. Then there's the ultimate thought. She's been on the cover of tons of fashion magazines. She's whatever high school girl, high school girl wants to be. Oh, and they mentioned the ultimate biker gang leader too. What? I always thought his hair just looked like 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 a like a stemmed out corn or something. The scary thing is he's the de facto leader of every biker gang in Japan. Gangs everywhere love this guy. On top of that, there's the ultimate martial artist, the ultimate fanfic creator, the ultimate gambler, the ultimate swim pro, the ultimate programmer, the ultimate clairvoyant, and then some. Reading that made me realize how totally powerless I was. I was it was the country's finest top to bottom. I felt like a tame little ho house cat who'd wandered into a pride of lions. See, there's a few students who I couldn't find any info on no matter how much I looked. With all those ultimate students, I'm the only one without any kind of worthwhile talent. But then, what about those other new students who didn't seem to pop up anywhere? He doesn't have a talent? Could they just be average students like me without any talent or anything? That thought was kind of encouraging. I mean, I know I don't have much in the way of personality, but beyond that, there's an even bigger issue. How did such an unbelievable, unbelievably average student like me get picked to come to this ultimate high school? I mean, I guess there is a reason. You just have to take one glance at the acceptance letter they sent me to see why. What did they... We recently held a lottery to select one ordinary student to attend our school. As a result, you have been selected and we invite you to join us as the ultimate lucky student. <laughs> 
They spelled it out plain as day I got invited by pure luck. That's so sad. That's so sad. Honestly, I probably would have been better off just declining their offer, but after hearing how graduating was a guarantee for success later in life, I just couldn't say no. But then, actually standing there in front of the school, I started to feel lost, like I didn't belong there. I could feel myself losing my nerve. But still, I can't just stand here in front of the gate forever. Frozen in place, murmuring to myself, I looked down at the acceptance letter clutched in my hand. It said there'd be a meeting for all incoming students in the main hall at 8 a.m. The meeting isn't, still isn't for a little while, but you should I should probably just head in. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. I gathered up all my determination, and I took my first step towards the main hall. This looks like a hopelessly average school. This is where we're supposed to meet, right? I guess I'm the first one here. You did say it was a little while early, Makoto. There's a really elegant clock over in the corner. It says 7.10 a.m. The meeting doesn't start until 8. 7.10? What the hell? The meeting doesn't start until 8 o'clock, so there's still a full 50 minutes left. Makes sense nobody else would be here yet. Trying to play it cool, I took my first step into Hope Speak Academy. It was also my first step towards starting a new life at a new school. At least that's what I was hoping for. Uh... Makoto, I told you not to prepare with that LSD. The instant I took that step forward, my view became warped and twisted. I was like, it was like some kind of delusion melting away and mixing together into something else. Spinning, mixing, melting away, and then spinning again. And the next moment, everything went black. That was how it all began. And how life as I knew it came to an end. At that point, I should have realized the reason I was brought to Hope's Peak Academy wasn't because I had ultimate good luck. So I could experience ultimate despair. How do you mean? It was so I could experience ultimate despair. Where am I? I woke up with my head resting on top of a hard wooden desk. My body feels heavy. It's pretty normal for me to zoink off and so, 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 zonk. <laughs> it's pretty normal for me to zonk off. What was I doing asleep here just now? This isn't a classroom I've ever been in before. What the heck is going on? Oh, I like the music. You can press and hold the right, right mouse buttons. You can you can press and hold the right the right mouse button and 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 move the mouse around. That's the desk I fell asleep on. I can still see a line of drool I must have left there. I'll have to clean that up later. Hey, what's this on the desk? Hey there, new kid. The next semester is about to start. Starting today, the school will be your entire world. An orientation guide. It's some kind of cheap looking pamphlet and there's something handwritten on it. The next semester is about to start, starting today the school will be your entire world. What the hell? Is this someone's idea of a joke? Clock. Is it still 7, 10 a.m.? Oh, no, it's 8 o'clock, okay. It was just after 7 when I first got here. Has it really almost been an hour since then? Is that a surveillance camera? It's a dangerous world we live in, I guess they have to keep these weirdos from just wandering in. There's a TV. The school is funded by the national government, so I guess it's not weird to have TVs in here. Something feels off, I wonder what it is. What the heck? In any normal classroom, that's where a window should be. But it looks like some kind of metal plate has been bolted over it. If I were to knock on it... Bang bang. Yeah, definitely metal. Thick too, very solid. Wait, that's not what matters here. More important, why are there metal plates over the windows? Okay, let's see. What might have happened is, I got myself so wound up, I passed out in the main hall and then someone carried me here. If that's true, it must mean this is a classroom inside Hope's Peak Academy. But that if that's true, that just raises more questions. This is really strange. I mean, those metal plates covering the windows, it's like a prison or something. None of this makes any sense. I should probably head back to the main hall. It's already past the meeting time. There might be other students there now. Jeez, this hallway's kind of weird too. This is getting stranger by the second. I honestly have no idea what's going on. Well, for now, I'll just head to the main hall. I always thought, me and my sister always thought, me and Urzatz always thought that the kids in the school were all on LSD because look at the hallway. The hallway's pink right now, but there are no pink lights. That's not a fucking, that's not a pink light. That's not a pink light, okay? That's that's a white light. You can't convince me otherwise. But I always thought like the hallways were dyed certain colors. Look, green, see? Green. Those are white lights. You can't convince me otherwise. So uh, we always thought that and there aren't even any lights in this in this hallway. There are no lights here. Oh, I, I don't need to do that yet. Where am I going? The front hall? Where's the front hall? Where am I? In? Uh, I... Let's just, let's go to the inn. Despair Hotel. How'd you eat? We're gonna stay at the Despair Hotel! The Avery Room. It's locked. Oh, okay. Danger keep out. What does it say under that? What does it say under that? I want to know. The school store, I guess it's not open yet. Oh, it says store. Okay. How did you know it was the school store? 
By the time I got back to the main hall, everyone else was already there. Ah. Oh. Standing before me were the ultimate students that had been handpicked by the school. I looked around at everyone who's gathered there, taking in their faces one at a time. Maybe I was just imagining it, but I swear I could feel a kind of aura coming off each of them. How's it going? My name's Makoto Naegi. Sorry I'm late, a bunch of stuff happened and all of a sudden I was just asleep. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure his name is Hagakure. Uh, the only reason why I remember is because his hair, I always used to make fun of it and I always used to reference back to other characters. Whoa, you too? Things just keep getting curiouser and curiouser. So strange. I declare beyond the shadow of a doubt that this is a strange situation indeed. What are you talking about? I honestly have no idea what's going on right now. Just a moment, there's something else we must address. Makoto, your tardiness is- <laughs> Makoto, your tardiness is unacceptable. Surely you were aware that the meeting was about to start at 8am sharp. Yeah, uh, he was here before any of you. To be late on your first day is unspeakable. I must report you must accept your due punishment. What's your problem? It's not like he wanted to be late. He didn't have any control over it. Everyone just calm down. Listen, why don't we all go around and introduce ourselves? The hell? Now's no time for friggin' introductions. Maybe, but it may be good to at least find out who, we're, who we all are before digging into the bigger problems here. I mean, how are we even supposed to talk to each other if we don't know each other's names? That's, that's a good point. I don't remember- I know there was something about you, but I don't remember what it was. Okay, so let's get introductions out of the way then. We can move on to whatever else. Sound good. I'm totally lost, but I think it's best to just focus on getting to know each other for now. So I guess this is a good chance- as, I guess this is as good a chance as I'm gonna get. I already looked everyone up at the Host Speak Academy thread online, but I still don't really know what kind of people they actually are. Time to find out. I'll start by talking to those five over there. Aim at a student, press less mouse to talk to them. Each conversation is important to the overall story, so I keep track of how they go. Um, I don't like you. I don't. I like you because I played the Spare Girls. I like you a lot. Toko Fukawa, ultimate writing prodigy. Ultimate baseball star. Kiyotaka Ishimaru, ultimate moral compass. Ultimate fanfic creator. Sayaka Maizono, ultimate thought. Ultimate question mark. Jinko Arashima, ultimate fashionista. Chihiro Fujisaki, ultimate programmer. Aoi Asahina, ultimate swimming pro. Wando Owara, ultimate biker gang leader. Kayaki Atagami, ultimate affluent uh, progeny. Sakura Ogami, ultimate martial artist. Yasuhiro Higakure, ultimate clairvoyant. Sefsia Ludenberg, ultimate gambler. Yeah, she wrote a novel when she was 10 that got everyone talking and launched her literary career. Then two years ago, she released So Lingers the Ocean, a love story said to be her masterpiece. The book was such a hit with women that fishermen quickly shot to the top of every hottest men pole. Despite her age, she won countless literally pro lit what? Despite her age, she won countless literary prizes, all and all of her books are instant bestsellers, which is why she's come to be known as the ultimate writing prodigy. What else would you call such a young and talented author? But I figured she'd be a lovey dubby type, what with her masterpiece being called being a romance and all. It's not polite to stare, you know. Stop staring at me like I'm some filthy creature. Filthy creature? No, I just thought- I know what you just thought. You just thought you'd never seen such an ugly woman. You just thought you're- s it's so funny. No, that's not what I was thinking at all. Don't bother trying to lie to me. Okay, I don't like her in this game, but I liked her in the other one. <laughs> I recognize that name. Yeah, look, that's his picture right there. He played for the National High School Champs as their- as their cleanup hitter. The ultimate baseball star. That superb athletic specimen is- You? Seriously? Huh? What's wrong? What, were you expecting some kid with a shaved head? Shaved head? No, I was just expecting more of a, you know, sporty looking traditional baseball player type. I mean, when I found that article and picture of you online, that's how you look then. What? Aw oh, man, you found that picture of me playing baseball? Seriously? I hate that picture. That's not cool. This is so not cool. Seriously, I'm like mega embarrassed right now. I didn't have a choice, okay? Shaving your head like that is part of the nas part of national championship regulations. Now I refuse to cut my hair, and I'm not gonna dye it back to normal either. Oh yeah, in Japan it's- it's uh- In Japan it's frowned on to dye your hair any color than your natural color. Actually, can I be totally honest with you? I don't like baseball, like at all. I've never gone to a single practice. He's never practiced and he's still his team star player? He's some kind of prodigy. And as soon as I got accepted here, I quit baseball for good. I have my own dream for the future. A dream for the future? My only path in life is getting into music. You can feel that star quality aura I have, right? You know what I mean. 
I'm gonna be a singer, so all I need is a songwriter and someone on guitar and we're all set. This new version of me that's chasing after my dream is like super cool to the mat. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I never imagined I'd hear something like that from a baseball all-star. Sayaka Mizono. Sayaka thought. So that's Kiyotaka, according to what I saw about him on that thread. He went to a famous private school and won top honors every year. He's basically a flawless honor student. He's also known for the work he's done with his committee's public moral public morals committee. They say he's res he respects rules above all else, earning her the title earning him the title of ultimate moral compass. Anyway, you could call me Taka. You said your name was Makoto Naegi, right? That's a good name, a strong name. You should thank your parents for giving you such an excellent name. And to keep that name from losing its value, you must devote yourself every single day. Life is worth putting in every ounce of effort into it, right? Right. This guy is kind of annoying. <laughs> By the way, how much do you know about the world of 2D art? World of 2D? Well, in that world, I am well known and supremely well regarded as the ultimate fanfic creator. I once sold 10,000 copies of one of my fan comics at a school festival. The event has passed into legend. Some of them didn't get it, of course, saying I'd be tainting the event. Tainted the event. How stupid can you be? That's too bad about them, but selling 10,000 copies like that is definitely pretty remarkable. The world- the words of such idiots means nothing to me. I am like Van Gogh, utterly unappreciated in my time. I am a soldier, serving night and day to destroy all mindless preconceptions about fanfiction. I'm sure if you were to observe my work, Mr. Nayagi, you would comprehend its greatness immediately. For my work is filled with the deep- with deepest meaning. What kind of meaning? It's about embracing our basest urges. I don't want to comprehend it. The way she moves is positive- No, stop, 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 stop following her, Makoto, stop. And that pleasant scent I can't quite place, Sayaka Maizono. When I saw her name in the thread online, frankly, I was pretty surprised. She's in a pop group famous all across the country. In fact, she's their lead singer. As the ultimate pop sensation, she's in high demand to appear on TV and magazines everywhere. But actually, that's not the only reason I was so surprised to find out she'd been going to, to the school. Sure, she doesn't remember, but... Well, never mind. No matter how you slice it, she's really beautiful. Almost like a doll or something. Stop! You're not supposed to fall for the thought. I'm not a doll, you know. I'm alive. Did you hear me? I'm <laughs> I did say at the beginning of the game that Makoto must think everyone's either mutant or psychic. Huh? <laughs> Kidding, I just have really good intuition. She's a sharp one. By any chance, now what? Yeah, it must be, I'm sure of it. Makoto did- Jeez, you guys, how long do you plan to waste our valuable time with this ridiculous back and forth? Sorry, just got carried away, I guess. Does she know Makoto? From, like, before or something? Self-introductions are for introducing yourself, not bab bumbling through a bunch of ideal chit-chat. You're right. Sorry, Makoto. We can talk about this later. Oh, okay, bye. Sounded like Sayaka really had something she wanted to say, but it's not like we'll never see each other again. Like she said, we can talk later. Does she? Did she know us from somewhere? Now to talk to those five people over there. Are you the R Rantaro of this game? She's pretty tight-lipped, huh? Oh, but you know, her name didn't show up anywhere in that Hope Peak Academy thread. I did see there are students like me, ones who didn't have any real identity or presence. Could this girl be one of them? So what are you doing at this school? What's that supposed to mean? No, I just meant getting invited here means you're some kind of ultimate something, right? So what ultimate something are you? Why should I tell you? Huh? I guess you don't have to tell me. No, I don't have to tell you, so I'm not going to. Nothing about her turned up online, so I was thinking maybe she got picked by chance like me, but... Her face is like an iron mask. If she doesn't want to tell me anything, no point in asking. She's best girl, because I'm, I don't think she dies. I can't remember if she does or not, but she, she doesn't die, I, I don't think. And she's best girl because all of the love interests die in these games, I'm pretty sure. Anybody would recognize this one. She's got more charm and presence than any high school girl in the country. She's the ultimate fashionista. I've seen her in tons of magazine covers, but... I feel like that doesn't quite match up to reality. Huh? Are you talking about my cover photos and junk? Oh, of course. Those are totally photoshopped. Photoshopped? Yeah, you know, edited to hell back. Edited to hell back with, like, computers and junk. Oh, so they aren't real. What can we do? Come on, don't act so surprised. You're gonna make me all depressed. Totally. It's totally normal these days to Photoshop that crap out of cover photos. If you're surprised by that, you'd be totally blown away by a certain dangerous little, by a certain little dangerous little diva of ours. <laughs> they make the eyes and junk super big and then tweak the skin so it looks all ceramic and porcelain. Oh, 
So many dreams are getting crushed today. <laughs> Sorry, I get kind of embarrassed whenever I introduce myself like this. Anyway, I hope we can get along. Same here, nice to meet you. Huh? Maybe it's just my imagination, but have we met before? Have we? I don't think so, we just met for the first time, which is why I said nice to meet you. Oh yeah, good point, sorry. I'm pretty sure there was something about him, Makoto, knowing her father, I think. Her father was in, um, Despair Girls, but he died. Oh shit, that was a spoiler, my bad. You have to apologize for that. Yeah. Oh yeah, Chihiro Fujisaki is known for all the cutting edge programs she's created. She's the ultimate programmer. She also got that kind of, she's also got that timid little bunny type thing going, which has endeared her and her, to her legion of fans. So listen, I'm really sorry. Why are you apologizing? What? What are you apologizing for now? Well, just because you seem upset, you must be mad at me, right? No, not at all. I was just lost in thought about something. Lost in thought. Yeah, I had. It had nothing to do with me being upset or anything. Thank you. Oh, that's good. I was afraid maybe you didn't like me. I'm glad. I'm starting to understand why her fans are so into her. Are you into her, Makoto? We got like two different, like, we've got two athletic ultimates here. Aya Asahina, she's been breaking records in every competition she's been in since elementary school. She's been chosen as the upcoming ult Olympic uh, cadet. She is, without a doubt, the ultimate swimming pro. The combination of her ability, appearance, and um, portions, <laughs> proportions have been widely discussed online. So, um, what was your name again? Sorry, totally forgot. Makoto Naegi. <laughs> oh yeah, I knew it was something like that. No, not something like that, it is that. <laughs> sure, sure, got it. Here, I'll hammer it into my brain right now. Yeah. Makoto Naegi, Makoto Naegi. She just keeps repeating, repeating my name and moving her finger across her palm like she's writing something. What are you doing? You don't know? If you want to remember someone's name, you gotta write it on your hand three times. I've never heard of that before in my life. Hey, by the way, how do you spell your last name? You spell it exactly like it sounds. Um... I have no idea. <laughs> I'll just figure it out later. Naegi? 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 Naeg? Anyway, glad to meet you. Sure, same here. Well, one thing I learned, she's totally easy... Easy going and bustling with energy. Bursting with energy. Goddamn. Mondo Awada, huh? Which means he's the current leader of the largest biker gang in Japan. He's earned respect, even awe, from every gang in the country. He's the ultimate biker gang leader. Um, nice to meet you too. Hell yeah. I'd better be careful around him. One wrong word and I could wake up at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> Goddamn, okay. It's four over there are the only ones left. This is- I'm gonna go for this one. I'm gonna like hang out with this one all the time. <laughs> uh, hiya, nice to meet you. That's the most half-assed introduction I've ever heard. There isn't really anything I could do about it. Even among the ultimate students, this one is special. Byakuya Togami, he's the heir apparent of his family's massive financial conglomerate. The fuck? He's already started managing business operations and his own personal assets are well vast. His title of ultimate affluent progeny is completely accurate. He's the definition of exceptional. That's everything I learned about him from that Hoax Peak Academy thread online. Come on. We're done with introductions, right? How much longer are you going to stand there? Go away, I'm sick of looking at you. His aura says to me, you and I will never stand on the same level like a king in training. I, I still want to- like, he's, he's like a dick. He, he is, but like, I still want to- I still wanted to go. It's, uh, yeah, that, I was right. Y uh, Yasuhiro Higakure. Oh, jeez, I almost asked her if she was a guy. <laughs> the day I say something like that out loud is the day I get turned into a human meatball. Now I remember, she's completed- she competed in martial arts tournament in America and once by being a girl. She's the ultimate martial artist. She fought in over 400 matches and never lost a single one. Dirt also said a bit more about her. Some call her Ogre. Some even think she's the closest known relative to the premates, a fame missing link. Any incoming host speak students who are reading this, let me warn you right now. If you value your life, avoid her at all costs. No, I refuse. Standing in front of her right now, I don't think they were exaggerating about that. Hey, hey you. Huh? Yeah? I snapped to attention without even realizing it. Then she started to poke around and probe at my body. Um, what are you- Muscle quality and quantity is right about that of an extremely ordinary high school student. What a shame. You're not at all fit to act as my training partner. I'm not sure that's such a shame for me. Okay, I want to also get with Hagakure when I'm done with Byakuya. Yasuhiro Hagakure, known as Supernova in the psychic community, the trend-setting ultimate clairvoyant. Honestly, I don't really get all that fortune-telling stuff, it's pretty much beyond me. Still, I can't help wondering if there's any truth to it. Could it be? <laughs> Could it be? Uh, okay, I give up. Uh, what happened? 
I saw it. I looked right at it. Seriously, I totally saw it. Saw what? A guardian angel with a crazy perm chasing after Bigfoot running off with the sky finish. What? 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 That's the most contradictory sentence I've ever read in my life. A guardian angel with a crazy perm chasing after Bigfoot running off with a sky fish in its mouth. And that guardian angel is your guardian angel. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my god. But hey, we should grab some br brewskis. Brewskis? We should grab some brewskis sometime and get real deep into the Lemuria and its civilization. We're not allowed to drink, we're in high school. You know? Oh, I'm actually t <laughs> I'm actually 21. I've been held back a few times, see, and well, it's a long story. A few times? Yeah, I bet that is a long story. She's my favorite ultimate something, but she's not my favorite character. Celestia Ludenberg, huh? I actually hate her more than I think I do. Ludenberg, it is my name. But if you don't mind, I would prefer for you to call me Celeste. You are Japanese, right? Huh? Oh wait, she has an accent. Should I try to put on an accent? Of course. Why do you ask? If you don't mind, could you tell me your real name? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Celestia Ludenberg is my real name. But as I mentioned, I would much rather you call me Celeste. She's polite and pretty, but pretty forceful at the same time. I don't think she wants to say any more about it. I guess the rumors in that thread were right about her. The self-styled Celestia Ludenberg. She's the ultimate gambler who's never lost a bet. Other than her obvious love of gothic Lolita clothes, everything about her is wrapped in a veil of lies. They say she entered and won an underground gambling tournament earning the title of Queen of Liars. She's totally cleaned out the other players, taking their life savings and laughing as she did it. I look forward to getting to know you better. I like her... I like her ultimate, and I like her backstory. Hers is my favorite few things, but I don't like her character. I don't like her. I look forward to getting to know you better. Ha ha ha. That smile's beyond deceptive. I'd better watch myself around her. And with that, all the introductions are done. Even though they're all ultimate, they each have their own individual sort of something. Okay, time to get down to business. It's no time to stand around making friends like a bunch of dull-eyed baboons. Oh, that's true. I think someone said something about a bigger problem or something. What was that about? Uh, well, you see, Makoto, you said a bunch of stuff happened and then you were just asleep, right? Well, the same is true for all of us. What? Seriously? Just after each of us got into the main hall, we lost consciousness. And then we came to, we were some somewhere here in the school. That's what happened to you, right? But that's just weird that every one of us would get knocked out like that. Piece of shit. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> that's not the only thing. You saw where all the class- the windows in the classes and hallways were, right? But instead of normal glass windows, it was a bunch of big metal plates. What was that about? Plus, all my stuff's missing, even my cell phone. Yeah, you're right. I haven't seen my PDA anywhere. And there's the main hall here. The front exit is completely blocked by some giant metal hatch. There wasn't anything like that when I first got here. What the heck? What's it doing there? Maybe we got ca caught up in some kind of, like, you know, crime or something? What, like a, a kidnapping? You think maybe someone grabbed us and hauled us off and we're not actually at the school? Come on, don't think like that. Cheer up. I bet this is all just part of the school's orientation procedure. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. So I'm just gonna take it easy for a little bit. Ah, uh, so do you think they want to do something to surprise us? Huh? Well, if that's all it is, it's nap time for me. <laughs> I was up way too late last night so I could use a little shut-eye. I can feel everyone's tension evaporating. Then it- and then it began. Ah, the universal Danganronpa bell. If I ever hear that bell, I'm running for my life. The voice seemed totally out of place. It was so playful, so completely unconcerned. I couldn't help but feel a deep, unnerving dread at the sound of it. It was like hearing someone laugh at the scene of an accident. Uh, to all incoming students, I would like to begin the entrance ceremony at... Right now! Uh-oh, okay. Please make your way to the gymnasium at your earliest convenience. That's all. I'll be waiting. What the hell was that just now? Goodbye. Well then, if you'll excuse me. Uh... Okay, I do- I do dislike him, and I know some people- I know some people like that sort of character, but I don't like him for that. But I'm still gonna hang out with him. Hey, hey what? You're just gonna take off just like that? Could it be? <laughs> Man, thank god it was all a joke. I'd be totally freaked out if this was real. You know? Alright, guess I'll head out too. Wonder what they got planned for us next. Uh, Damn, I was totally looking forward to that nap too. Why'd they have to go and kill the mood? Huh? Wait for me, I wanna go with you. 
Catch us all then, and we'll see you all there. Not that anyone cares, but I'm going too. Everyone took off for the gymnasium, but I was frozen where I stood. That uneasy feeling I had before, I couldn't get it out of my mind. And it looked like I wasn't the only one. Uh, I don't- I don't like that you're my sidekick for like, the first trial. This- this doesn't seem right. Yeah, that announcer was totally weird. Maybe, but just saying put- just staying put doesn't mean we'll be safe. Besides, aren't you guys just a little bit curious to find out what's going on around here? If we do not move forward, we learn nothing. The only choice is to push ahead. I guess she's right, but still, I'm kind of no, really nervous. We don't have a choice. We have to go. They say they said to go to the gym, right? Okay, I don't want to talk to any of these people, so let's just leave. Where's the gym? Uh, okay, this way. This way. Oh yeah, okay, here it is. God, I had no idea this Toast Peak Academy place was gonna be such a pain in my balls. It really ain't that much different from the time I spent in Juvie. Hell, this place is even worse. Why isn't there anyone here? Walking through the halls, I didn't see a single person. This is bad. Isn't that, like, seriously not good? They're, they're just trying to spook us. They'll take those metal plates down later, I'm sure of it. All we can do now is hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Well, hell, it ain't like I'm scared of nothing. Let's just get this over with. Hey, where's whoever called us here? Mondo, stop! No running! <laughs> I too shall go. Hey, wait, don't leave me here all alone. Still filled with uneasy uneasy dread, I did what the announcement said and went to the gym. I saw what was waiting for us there. Oh, the entrance ceremony? Oh, it really looks like an entrance ceremony. Yo. See, told ya, it's totally normal it's totally normal entrance ceremony stuff. Hero was right. But in a way that just emphasizes how completely not normal all of us were. Hey there, howdy, hello! Is everyone here? Then let's get things rolling! Jesus. Okay, let's do it. It's a- it's Teddy. It was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. Right before my eyes, it was- What was I seeing? It was utterly incomprehensible. Such a bright voice and carefree attitude was completely out of place. And all that anxiety I'd been carrying with me suddenly transformed into outright fear. What? What? That teddy bear could talk? Calm down, I'm sure there's just a speaker inside of it. I told you already, I'm not a teddy bear. I am Monokuma, and I'm your headmaster. What? It moved! Seriously, man, calm down. It's probably just a remote control or something. How dare you compare me to a child's plaything? You cut me deep, deeper than the Marianas Trench. My remote, con remote control system is so complex, even the folks at NASA can't recreate it or even comprehend it. Ah, but don't make me say stuff that might destroy NASA's dreams. I just couldn't bear that. You are Teddy. Bear that? Really, you are unfortunate. Now then, moving on. We really must hurry and get started. Giving up already? No other stupid bear puns? Quiet down now, quiet down. Ah, okay, so. He's abandoned the guy. Everyone stand at attention and bow, and good morning. Good morning! Now then, let us commence with the most noteworthy and memorable entrance ceremony. First, let's talk a bit about what your school life here will be like. Now, uh, make no mistakes. You few students so full of potential represent the hope of the world. To produce such splendid hope, you will all live a communal life together solely within the confines of this school. Everyone will live in harmony together and adhere to the rules and regulations of the school. Huh? Now then, regarding the end date for this communal life, there isn't one. In other words, you'll be here until the day you die, such as the school life you've been assigned. What did he just say? Until the day we die? Yep. Oh, but fear not. We have quite an abundant budget, so you won't lack for all, common, all of the common conveniences. That's the least of our worries right now. Yeah, what the hell? You're saying I have to live here forever? You're screwing with us, right? I'm not screwing with you. I am no liar. Of that, you can be 100% sure. Uh, just for your information, you're completely cut off from the rest of the- from the outside world. So you don't have to worry about that dirty, dirty land beyond these walls ever again. Cut off? So all those metal plates all over the school. They're there to keep us trapped in here? That's exactly what they're there for. No matter how much you may yell and scream for help, help will not come. So with all that in mind, feel free to live out your life here with- with reckless abandon. Come on, what the hell is this? I don't care if the school or whoever else is behind all this, it's just a really bad joke. 
Yeah, cut the shit out. It ain't funny anymore. Keep saying this is a liar joke, a bunch of skeptics, all of you. But I guess I, I guess you can't help it, huh? You all grew up in an age where you're taught to doubt your neighborhood. Well, you'll have plenty of time to figure out whether or not what I say is true. And when the time comes, you'll see with your own eyeballs that I speak the undeniable truth. Come on, now, what's the matter with all of you? You decided on your own free will to attend Topeak Academy, didn't you? But now, before the entrance exam before the entrance ceremony is even finished, you've already decided you want to leave? Hey, um... Oh, but you know, I guess I did forget to mention one thing. There is one way for you to leave the school. Really? As headmaster, I crafted a special clause for those of you who would like to leave. I call it the graduation clause. Now then, let me tell you about this fun little rule. As I mentioned, in order to maintain an environment of harmony here, we rely on communal lifestyle. If someone were to disrupt that harmony, and they and they alone would be allowed to leave the school. That is, that, my students, is the graduation clause. What do you mean by disrupt the harmony? Well, you know. If one person were to murder another. Murder? Stabbing, strangling, bludgeoning? Crushing, hacking, drowning, igniting, how you do it doesn't matter. You must kill someone if you want to leave, it's as simple as that. The rest is up to you. Give it your all to achieve the best outcome in the worst way possible. A chill shot down my spine. You must kill someone if you want to leave. As soon as I heard those words, my blood went cold. I bet that got your brain juices flowing. Beat the heck out of a human catching a salmon, huh? Well, like I said before, you guys are the hope of the world, but you know. Taking that hope and seeing it gets, get murdered creates a darkened shadow of despair. And I just find it so darn exciting. What the hell are you talking about? To kill each other is... It's... To kill each other is to kill each other. I'm sure there's a dictionary here somewhere if you need it. We know what it means! It's not the problem! Why do we have to kill each other? Yeah, stop blabbering on about this nonsense! Just let us go home already. Blabbering? You guys just don't get it, do you? Let us go, let us go. You keep on saying the same thing over and over and over and over. Listen, from this moment on, the school is your home. Your life, your world. You got it? And you can kill as much as you want to kill, so go ahead, go on. Go on a killing spree. Alright, come on. How long are you gonna keep this up? Eh? You got us, okay? You scared the hell out of us, so you can go ahead and reveal the trick now. Reveal the trick? Yeah, because I mean, you know, this is all some kind of trick and all, right? So, uh, like... Dude, shut the hell up and get out of my way. Shoving Hiro aside, Mondo placed himself in front of Monokuma, his voice rumbling with thunder. Listen up, asshole. This shit's gone way too far. What the hell kind of joke is that? Joke? What do you mean? Like your hair? <laughs> Wait, you mean like your hair? Mondo roar and then there's a sudden boom. It's all the sound of floorboards as he kicked off and launched himself into the air. He flew at Monokuma fast and straight as a bullet. He locked onto his target. What's that sound? I don't like it. I don't like it. What's that sound? What? No smart ass come back this time? What's that sound? Stop that goddamn beeping and say something! Get rid of it! Huh? Hurry and throw it! I don't know if her ferocity stunned him into silence or what, but without a word he did what he was told. He threw him on Akuma. And as soon as he did... Oh shit. The hell? That sure a shit wasn't a joke. It blew the hell up. There's a painful ringing in my ears, and I can smell gunpowder. Explosions might happen all the time in movies or whatever, but when it's in real life, I've never seen anything like it. But you know, this means that teddy bear has been destroyed, right? I told you, I'm not a teddy bear, I'm Monokuma. Oh, oh jeez. Ah, uh, there's another one? You son of a bitch, you seriously tried to kill me just now. Well, yes, I was serious about trying to kill you. You did violate one of the school regulations, after all. I'll let you off with a warning this time, but you better be careful from now on. Any naughty boy or girl who violates my rules won't get off with just a little swat on the butt. Hey, so does this mean there's like a bunch more of you around somewhere? Yeah. Monica must have been placed all throughout the school, yes. Plus, don't forget the surveillance cameras installed everywhere. And if you're caught breaking any rules, well, you just saw what happened, right? 
And I won't be forgiving my punishment. I won't be forgiving with my punishment next time, so don't let it happen again. That's not even punishment, that's just wrong. Yeah. Now then, lastly, to commemorate your joyous entry into our school, I have a little something for you. This is our official student handbook. Pretty cool, huh? As you can see, it's fully digital, so naturally we call it the e-handbook. Ahem. Yes, well, moving on. This handbook is absolutely vital to a healthy school life, so don't lose it. When you start it up, it will display your name. And always make sure you have the right one. Now, this is not your everyday notebook. It has so many more uses than that. Also, it's completely waterproof. Splash it, wash it, drown it, it'll keep on ticking. And thanks to its space-age design, it can withstand an impact force of up to 10 tons. Very resistant. Contains all of our school regulations, so make sure you review them thoroughly. You'll hear me say this a lot, but any violation of school regulations will not be tolerated. Rules are strict, yes, but they also protect. Society, for example, would be other chaos without laws. The same thing applies here, which is why it's crucial we have strict punishment in place for violators. Okay, well, that brings our entrance exam to a close. Please enjoy your abundantly dreary school life, and see ya. Oh, jeez. And with that, he's gone, leaving us all in a state of shock. So, guys, how would you define what we just experienced? How? Why? I don't understand any of this. We have to live here forever? Or kill? What? What just happened? Everyone, we need to just calm down. First, let's take a second to summarize everything we just heard. Based on what Monokuma said, we essentially have two choices. Choice number one is that we stay here living a communal life together until the day we die. And the other choice is... We want to get out of here alive. We have to kill someone, right? But killing someone, that's... We were abducted out of nowhere and stuffed into this place, place meant to look like a school. And now we're supposed to straight out kill each other? This is... This is... This is just... What is this? A lie is what it is. All these ridiculous things we heard, this has to be fake. Right now, it doesn't matter if it's real or fake. What matters is... Is there anyone here who's seriously considering all this? To that, nobody had a response. Keeping quiet myself, I looked around at the others. Get Hagakure. They all stared at one another, trying to gouge, e trying to gouge each other's thoughts. I could almost taste the hostility. Now this looks a uh, goddamn. And that's when it hit me. I realized the true terror hidden within the rules of Monokuma had laid out. You must kill someone if you want to leave. These words had placed vicious thoughts deep within each of us. Each of us became suspicious of everyone else. We were forced to wonder, is someone going to betray us? And that was how my new school life began. The school, which had come out of nowhere to raise my hopes so high. It's not a school of hope. It's a school of despair. Hajime, we just entered a school of despair. You must kill someone if you want to leave. My mind froze and my breath caught in my throat as I thought about that. I could feel paralyzing fear slowly making its way through my body, dominating every last nerve. The air hung heavy on me, pressing down like a weight around my neck. It took everything I had just to endure that weight. But for as heavy as the air felt, all it took to pierce it was her sharp words. So what are you going to do now? Just stand around glaring at each other? Her, point, her pointed comment was directed at everyone in the room. It helped pull us all back to reality. Right, she's right. Sometimes, even when you're nervous or afraid, you just have to step forward. To forget such a simple fact, I can't forgive myself. I'm so ashamed. Please, someone hit me. I can't, <laughs> I can't forgive myself. Someone hit me. Punish me. Jesus, if you have time to yell about it, you have time to do something about it. Perhaps, but what is the mission exactly? Stupid. Idiot! To look for a way out, duh! We totally need to find whoever is controlling that stupid bear and beat the hell out of them. But before we do all that, maybe we should take a look at the handbook. It's probably best to check out the school regulations Monokuma mentioned before doing anything else. This is True, if we stumble around with no clue what the rules are, something like that might happen again. Shit. Fine. Then, then let's hurry up and check out the stupid rules already. Makoto Egg. Students may reside only within the school. Leaving campus is an unacceptable use of time. Night time is from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Some areas are off limits at night, so please ex exercise caution. Sleeping anywhere other than the dormitory will be seen as sleeping in class and punished accordingly. With minimal restrictions, you are free to explore Hosby Academy at your discretion. Violence against Headmaster Monokuma is strictly prohibited, as it is as is destruction of surveillance cameras. Anyone who kills a federal student and becomes blackened will graduate unless they are discovered. Additional school regulations may be added as necessary. Feeling a slight dizziness, I raised my face up from the screen. As I looked around, I saw the same stormy expression on everyone else's face. This is bullshit! What the hell kind of rules are these? I'm not gonna let them control me. Well then, why don't you wander around the school without a care in the world and see what happens? 
Personally, I would love to see what happens when someone breaks one of the rules. If you got punished like that, we saw before, I don't think there'd be a respawn waiting for him. Ever since I was a kid, I grew up with my older brother pounding this into my head. When a man makes a promise, he has to keep it, even if it kills him. So what? what? I made a ton of promises that I still have to keep. That's so what? So I can't afford to die in here? None of that thought made much sense to me. But you're saying you will follow the regulations, is that it? That's true. Oh, well, I guess you're right. Hey, um, I have a question. For regulation number six, what do you think it means exactly? Anyone who kills a fellow student and becomes black and will graduate unless they are discovered. You're talking about the second half, right? Where they- where it says, unless they are discovered? I was wondering about that myself. It says if you want to graduate, you have to kill someone without anyone finding out it was you. But why? Why do we have to do that? I don't see any reason to worry about it. Just wor worry about following the rules as they've been explained to us. Frankly, I don't want to hear anything from someone who waits for others to decide what to do for them. Don't jab at me. More like a full-on stab. Well, for now, let's forget all that silly junk about murderers or whatever. Now that we know the rules, let's start exploring the school. True, we need to find out where exactly we are. Is there any way out? What about food and supplies? The there are tons of questions we need to answer. Damn straight! Alright, let's all start looking around. I'll be going alone. What? what? Why? That's a stupid idea, don't you think? Someone here might have st already started thinking about murdering one of us. Are you saying we should start stand around with them in our midst and make it much easier for them. But if you go off alone, that gives them time to just find you and stab the hell out of you, right? Wait, hold on a second. That would never- Don't bother saying it couldn't happen. You can't deny the possibility. That's why you all ceased up with fear when that graduation rule was made clear to you. Am I wrong? But- So I'm simply acting in accordance with what I think is best for me. Hold on. Like how I'm gonna let you run off and do whatever you want. Out of my way, Plankton. What? what the fuck's that supposed to mean? One tiny bit of plankton drifting across the sea. So minuscule, so insignificant, they could possibly have any kind of influence on the boundless ocean. I'm gonna kick your ass. Stop it, we shouldn't fight. The fuck you just say? You some kind of goody, goody little bitch? Who do you think you are talking to me like that? You think you're fucking- you're my fucking dad or something? No, I wasn't- Fuck you. Did- <laughs> did- did- did I get punched? Did I get absolutely smacked? What just happened? He punched me. Oh shit. And I flew back in a heap. It's like something straight out of a comic book. I didn't even see the punch coming. It was just suddenly right there in my face. One second I was standing there, the next I was soaring through the air. Now that I think about it, maybe I'd kind of forgotten the kind of people I've been trapped here with. My common sense has just stopped functioning. Being around all these ultimates had blown my fuses. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised it led to something as absurd as this. I just lost track of that sense of reality. That was my last thought as my consciousness started to fade, before it finally cut out completely. And when I finally opened my eyes again, what I saw was... Where am I? As if it had become part of my daily routine, I woke up in yet another room I'd never seen before. Okay, so, where am I now?